thank you very much for uh, assisting today. Um, I will talk on um, learning assessment. So um, I listened today to some of the presentations and I feel that my presentation is not that uh, brightful. Um, so maybe some things today already had been referred to will be repeated in this, but um, I try to make it a, a example. Um, so um, I will talk on my teaching context on uh, the second part will be from classroom management to formative assessment, which is close to the uh, presentation before and the case study. I will show data uh, toward alter alternative assessment. And finally, I will discuss some of the outlook. Um, one, what is different from um, most presentations today is that I normally teach uh, German as a foreign language for absolute beginners. So I always start at uh, zero and the target group is about A1 or A2. I have only very few students who come up to B1 or B2 level. It's mostly second foreign language, L3 plus, and it could be uh, German as a major um, and it would be compulsory. Class sizes are normally 15 to 40 students. And as said before, uh, Austria or maybe other countries too, Japan is uh, a high stake test country. So you have to take a um, test in English for entering university, English, mathematics and language and so on. So English is uh, mostly, language learning is mostly combined with um, testing as a subject of study, not for really speaking or using, but just as a testing language. And this attitude is uh, one thing that is really difficult in class, uh, because if you want to teach a language as a language for using it, um, I try to get away from summative assessment to more self and peer evaluation and uh, feedback and portfolio. Uh, oriented um, approaches. The dilemma is that uh, when we take the CFR CV, CFR CV, uh, the backward design, it's outcome oriented and um, fostering a learner oriented approach, learning oriented approach. And, but assessment is needed anyway, we have to grade our students. And uh, some learners ask right away, uh, what do I have to do to get a grade? They don't never ask about what I can be able to use a language for. It's just, what do I have to invest to get a grade? So yeah, fine. the outcome is get a grade and not what you can do. And uh, yeah, you know, this is for you very, uh, clear the CFR, CFR, CV, CFR, I don't know, pronunciation may be different, and um, culture outcome oriented, backward design, action oriented, transparency, um, mobility, plurilingualism, and the CFR is very much studied in Japan. It's well known for more than 20 years. There are a lot of research groups, Japanese as a foreign language, CFR J for English in uh, high schools, J postal, what is the uh, Japanese version of E postal, uh, JSDL for other languages and other work groups. So it's well studied, but in the reality in teaching, it's not really reflected. And that's why well, my approach is from classroom assessment to formative assessment, shifting from the teacher to the learners, shifting from assessment to task completion, doing something, not assessment, but task. Uh, structuring classroom interaction with activities and tasks, um, giving opportunities to use language, um, implementing reflective tools, classroom diary, uh, self-evaluation and uh, peer evaluation. And this would look like this one. I will move this one to another part. Um, so this is 
normal, normally in Japan, teachers start with teaching material. They choose a textbook and they design a class around a textbook. This has to be done and this is what is being tested. For me, I don't, uh, the teaching material is the last thing I, I choose. First, I really try to plan the classes, how many lessons, normally 15 could be different. Then I think about can do tasks, what the student should be able to use the language in, maybe three, four tasks in a, in a term. Then I use a classroom diary, I implement it every week as a part of classroom. And uh, after the task, people, uh, students can self or peer, uh, have peer assessment. And finally, the final examination uh, is combining all these uh, red arrow tools. So every week a classroom diary, it's a part of classroom management. After task completion, self and peer assessment, and in the end of the term, the final um, self-evaluation and grading. So the assessment will be, will be, or oh, maybe I make it small. Um, the, self, uh, the appear will be here like um, the classroom diary, self, and this one. This is for the assessment and all other things are, are depending on the level and the class design. So I will show you some data. This is from the years 2016 and 17 uh, of two beginner classes. And um, I have data from over 15 years. I use this style of not every part, but most parts I have for a long time and developed it over time to adapt it to the environment. And it's a, a selection of data. So the classroom drivey, last five minutes of the lesson, writing down their impressions, questions, keyword, and reflections, everything they are in their mind. They can choose any language, mostly Japanese. They could use English too or German, but normally German as a target language, it's, uh, they are not able to write uh, much in it. And uh, they turn it in, I read it. I don't try to grade it. I try to read it to understand what students, uh, how they perceive class. The benefits are that I have an immediate feedback. I can questions, problems address right away. I get insights in the learner's perception of language learning. And it's a communication tool between student and teacher. It's adapted from the learner diary, logbook reflective journal as a yeah, communication tool. For example, you have here some, uh, it's class A, third week, student one. The Japanese, they read in Japanese, I translated it into English, so there might be a slight difference. Uh, yeah. So I could study useful German. I had the impression to understand the German forms well. Pronunciation is difficult. So they, they are, it's clear from the English, it's different. Today, I could not speak fluently for the self-introduction and got stuck. I have to exercise to be able to speak fluently. Studying origin, hometown and living, studying profession for male and female nouns, the spelling is different. You see, every student has a, a slight different perspective on what they are uh, looking at. Some are very small, uh, short. I can introduce myself, it's just a summary. I learned to do in German a quite long self-introduction compared to English, the pronunciation is different and difficult. So you see it's linguistic part, it's uh, uh, sometimes emotional or on uh, comparing English or German. For another class, um, this is maybe one maybe engineers, the others are from humanities. They are a little bit different. Here's one student writing right away in English. I do not correct. This is the spelling of the student. I do not correct anything. And um, there are long words. Um, this study heightened my ability. Pronunciation, it's something they are very much uh, uh, worried about. Uh, basic self-introduction, female nouns, German, female noun, male nouns. 
And this is something they are really uh, not aware of. You see the length and the, this, the last person uh, to the, it's on the pronunciation, the umlaut in German, the e, ö, ü, and others like this. So you see there's a big variety. I, let, I leave it open so that the students really to start to reflect and but later I try to um, catch them up. Next step would be task assessment. There is peer assessment, writing down the name, taking notes on the task and grading peers. They can in three steps. So it's very good, it's good or it needs to be improved. Or and self-assessment, reflecting on own efforts and the outcome, comparing own efforts with the efforts of the others. And this could is good for feedback and for um, goal setting. Example, uh, each time I will have only one student because of the data, this would be too much. I was a little bit nervous. I did say the same thing twice. I had the impression even my pronunciation was not sufficient. The task peer assessment comparison would be what is concerning the performance of the classmates. They almost had spoken smoothly. Some of them very were very good. Some had a unique content that was very good, I thought. The contents of my talk could have been a little more elaborated, I thought. So the last one is the reflective part where the students see how he or she has uh, to work on, 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 on their own uh, goal setting. The assessment from the classmates of the slowly, easy to understand, a little bit louder, to choose in family good, only the voice was a little weak, the amount of information was enjoyable, and my evaluation was speak slowly but continuously, quote, important topics of self-introduction speaks about something and someone. This was the task to talk not only about oneself, but another family member or a friend. Another example would be from uh, another class. This was in English. I feel very ner nervous because I was a first student to speak, to tell as many information about myself as possible. Uh, maybe I can introduce myself well, but I think I should speak louder and fluently. So comparing to the classmates, many people tell a lot of information about themselves. So as I do, however, some of them talked about not only themselves, but also their family members. I also talked about my sister, but I may have to introduce my family more. And the student gives a comment on the examination. First, I can't understand what should I do about this exam and feel nervous about it. So even if I call it a task on something they achieve and we exercise it uh, step by step, they feel it as an assessment, as an examination. And uh, this was very insightful for me. So some things, we implement things, but students may perceive it in a totally different way. And they were not used to this kind of tasks and uh, yeah, assessment, if they would like to do it. Uh, this was the feedback from the, the peers. Like here was very critical. Second one, was the preparation sufficient? Slowly, yeah, and here comes from Kobe, the words were jammed and could be good enough and some others um, content was good from Kobe and here from Fukuoka. So sometimes we students don't pay attention to the contents really. And uh, my evaluation was a little bit lower than the one before speaks uh, slowly but clear. Cham sometimes mentions the most important topics of self-evaluation, but here was Smithing talking about something in a detail. Yeah, so these are other examples of uh, self-assessment. You see some write only one sentence, one or two sentences, some really write a paragraph and reflect very detailed on, on things. Um, yeah, so it's uh, individually different. 
for me, what is important is not how, how much or so, but that they write something and not only one word, but they really try to uh, get on a focus. And uh, finally, the self-evaluation. Um, yeah, using the classroom diary, attendance, efforts during class, homework, achievement, uh, and grading, reasoning on grading. This is what the students has to do at the last class of the semester. And um, for example, what did you learn in this semester? So this is uh, a short part. Uh, and the self grade, they, I, I say to the student, they should grade themselves and uh, if the student and my grade are the same, there is no difference and there's no problem. Uh, sometimes there may be a difference and then I have to check what, what the difference comes for. Uh, I was able to study various expressions because the pronunciation was not sufficient. So yeah, it's uh, their perception. Uh, another student writes this one. Okay, so yeah, maybe you can read it. I'll give you some time. Sex is of nouns, gender of nouns. No? So, so the, uh, male, female nouns, 80 points. And in this semester, I studied German a lot, but I think I can study much harder than I was. So I choose this score to study more on next semester. So they have their own reasoning and I think this is okay. So uh, the, I do grading on the classroom diary. If this is completed, the self-evaluation sheet, the tasks, the homework. Uh, normally I do observe very closely every lesson, how they behave in class. I do a lot of interaction work and um, I compare the grades. In case of a discrepancy, I take into account peer evaluation. Yeah, the case study aimed to get a clearer picture of data available through classroom diary, self-evaluation, peer evaluation, and questionnaires. Sometimes I use questionnaires. The next step would be to analyze the data of students using rubrics or use qualitative data from interviews. Uh, does this alternative assessment setting provide enough evidence for assessment? I do not do any summative assessment. I do only this task and reflective tools. So sometimes I'm thinking that maybe I should do summative. I did compare one summative and formative assessment, but the outcome was almost the same. There is no big difference in grading. Only a few students have different speaking and writing or other skills and there may be, but it's really only a few. Um, yeah, students need to get used to this kind of grading. And uh, once they are used to, they, uh, they understand and they do it. Um, yeah, limitations. Task, the, the complexity of task is depending on the curriculum and the level of the students. Um, can do lists and self checklists are provided. Um, using rubrics. Uh, are not used yet for the evaluation. I thought I should make a rubric. Students have difficulties to understand the procedure, the evaluation and the purpose. They think they can get through the class without doing anything, but they yeah, don't get a grade then. Um, explanation is needed that students understand the, the concept and for transparency and uh, things. Classroom diary, uh, yes, but on a longer run with a language portfolio, I have doubts if students will do this. Somehow this has to be integrated in the classroom management, I think. So trying to solve this dilemma, we still have it. We can foster learning and learner and learning, including learners in the assessment is I think an important part to implement monitoring of their learning and reflection on their learning. This is the, so the outcome could be rethink your own efforts. I think uh, this is what we can get to. Patria, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. 
you should. Yeah, it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this is yeah. This is only the reflection. Thank you very much. If you have any question, yeah. Let's stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Presentation and the audience might uh, ask question if it feels like. Maybe I might ask just one. Yeah. If not, please. Um, Go ahead. I wanted to ask a little bit more about self-evaluation um, in the classroom diary. Um, mm -hmm. How do you implement um, students' responses or students' descriptions of their feelings um, into uh, the future design of your classes? Because the responses I can imagine are quite varied. What do you do with yeah. statements like, I feel insecure, I couldn't pronounce that word, or others speak better than I do? How is it relevant to you as a teacher? Do you do you address it in any way? Um, I don't. I try not to address it personally because Japanese students really get very easily anxiety when they when you ask them directly. So I read the the journal, and when this comes some several times, I try to make a exercise a task that they can. Uh, that, that we make pronunciation maybe in small groups or with the class or when they say I'm, I have no confidence. I try to make exercises that we all stand up and try to speak uh, first one or two sentences and then maybe two or three weeks later a little bit more than two sentences and then after three weeks time uh, I let them stand up and speak in front of the class. The last task is they have to stand in front of the class and speak. Okay. And, uh, do you somehow take notes of individual needs of your students or is it more on a like a general level what they need as a group based on what they handed in uh, as responses? It's what, what, what they handed in but after doing this for a long time I have a kind of I have a list of things what I think what comes up mm -hmm. and depending on the class and the dynamic of the class I choose some of these tools. Mm -hmm. So it's more like group based? Rather yes. Than put trace individuals and help. Specific. Sometimes I I I I I help individuals, but I try to make it uh, not confrontant, not confronting students with something so they don't feel. But I try to um, yeah support them that they see what they have to develop and what they helps them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, I'd like to ask you if uh, you eventually ask the students then to write their uh, reflections in German, eventually. In, in, in German? German? The language of yes. China. Do you get them eventually to write their reflections in German? Um. Yeah, normally the beginner classes are really starting with zero and until they can write something that, that would go for years. But I have some classes like uh, B1 or B2 levels, some of uh, graduate students or students who have been uh, abroad or very engaged, they write, to, they write in German. And, uh, but the, as this is reflective practice. I think it's more important to get some uh, hints how the students what they need for their learning so I think writing in Japanese is okay or writing in English but if they go to higher level they normally write in German yeah thank you thank you Gabriel very much well it's time to uh, finish thank you for your insightful presentation and it was, it was a pleasure to, to hear you and yeah. thank you very much bye. for listening and yeah goodbye thank bye. you bye, bye.